all right dave at the game thing here and in this video i'm going to do a basic overview of the mirroring and the gaming desktop mode for the blackmagic 9 pro now this video is primarily for my youtube tech bezzy who is mr kevin muldoon and what i'm going to do is put this live because although it is for kevin other people might find this interesting anyway i'm just going to crack on with this and hopefully for other people there might be elements that's going to be useful here all right then kevin so what i've got here is a uh, the 9 Pro connected up to my monitor and me, obviously me recorder as well, like through a switcher and stuff or through a, a splitter. Now, you can use any kind of USB-C interface basically to do this stuff with you no know, docking system and stuff. But weirdly, the original Samsung DeX station works perfectly with it. And also what I do, I use an extender cable so I can actually put my 9 Pro on a grip system with a fan on it and then plug it in via an extender cable into the uh, the samsung dock system although you can just pop it straight into the dock but i wouldn't recommend doing anything without a fan on to do with warzone mobile which is why i normally have it like you know extended on a cable so i can grip it on like me me table with a fan on the back of it and stuff anyway what it is i've got a keyboard connected to it via bluetooth so as you can see there hold on I'm navigating there with the keys on the on the keyboard. Well, I was until it went off the screen. And then I've also got a mouse connected there. And I've also got a PS5 controller. So all three of those things are connected up there and what have you. Now, obviously, right now, what we're looking at is just the phone being mirrored. So you can mirror this like the way you would do anything else that's capable of going over USB-C to HDMI or DisplayPort or something. However, I will get into uh, like, you know, the proper modes in a second. But what I'm going to do right now is just cut away to a section of another video that I done because there's something really unbelievable about this phone. And it is the way you can set up the resolution resolutions and the frame rates now granted there is no game that can take like full advantage of the highest frame rates that this phone can do but let me just show you this stuff because it's unbelievable and then finally after all of that we then get the options for our resolution and our frame rate output so let me just go over these for you we have got 1080 60 hertz 1080 120 hertz 1080 240 hertz 1440 60 hertz 1440 100 hertz 1440 144 hertz and then finally 4k uhd 60 hertz okay then kevin as you could see there mate you know that's just absolutely bananas do you know what i mean you just wouldn't expect that or shouldn't expect it from a phone it's absolutely crazy anyway let me just touch that mouse before the phone goes into sleep mode because i talk too much right so what i'm going to do now kevin is go into like the first of its kind of like well if this is not the desktop mode that i'll go to i think this is its normal like gaming mode which is what you would see on on the phone but what i'm going to do is obviously mirror it now to the record and, and obviously to the monitor now on the top of the phone you've got a dedicated button which switches it into its game mode so check this out i'm just going to flip the button over oh wait there wrong way <laughs> hold on here we go Okay, we should have heard some whizzy whoosh sound there as well as it went in. And there should be some music playing in the background as well, I think. So this is what you see on the phone screen when you're in like, you know, the, the kind of gaming mode and stuff. Now, there's a ton of things in here, mate. I just haven't got the time right now to get into all of that, but I will do at some point. But basically, from here, you can get access to all your games and stuff, and then all kinds of weird functions that the phone's got, you know, for, like, game assist and stuff like that. But nonetheless, I'll just click on a couple of things here. So let me click on that one. We then get this option comes up here, and you've got all kinds of stuff here to do. Well, game achievements and stuff like that. I'm not really into that stuff. 
but like you got all stuff here to do with like your network things and whatever then certain screen setting things as well so these will be stuff to do with the actual phone screen obviously not the hdmi stuff uh you know things to stop stuff from disturbing you which i think was something that you were asking me the other day one you know what do i do to like you know stop things from like getting on my nerves on the iphone and stuff unfortunately it's not quite as easy as it is on the red magic anyway so there's a number of you know other things here you know don't touch things that you shouldn't touch and like you know miss touch stuff or whatever it is and a bunch of other stuff down here as well right however what i'm going to do is just switch a socket or sorry socket switch a switch on here so if i go to mirror host mode what this button does here this dictates how the phone starts up when we go into the gaming specific mode obviously only when it's connected externally like it is now because regardless of what this button's set to if you kind of like switch the game button on when you're on only the phone then it'll obviously go back to what it's just been going to here so what i'm going to do is flip this switch here now what i'll do in a second is exit this mode and then when i go back into the gaming mode when i switch the button over honestly it just turns into like you know a proper gaming console it's friggin awesome but let me just come back here like i said there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you can get into and oh yeah there's all kinds of plug-in stuff and things like that and what have you oh and there's another cool thing called diablo mode i'll do it i'll definitely do a video about diablo mode on its own and what that does it basically like goes into an overclock on the processor and uh, you definitely feel a, you know an uplift from it it's actually probably well this and the 9s pro are definitely the best things on snapdragon 8 gen 3 because of this overclocking function that they do call diablo mode anyway that'll be enough to show you what the phone would look like in its gaming mode when you press the red button so what i'm going to do here is come back out now because i flipped that switch just before when i flip it when i flip the like the red button on the phone i'm getting mixed up here between switches and buttons right <laughs> so when i flip the red button on the phone again now watch what it goes into wow look at that <laughs> now that might not look quite as like sexy or whatever as the previous interface but this is basically you know it's a console in it it's just a console interface it's awesome now look at this so i can go around here with like you know the keyboard obviously like that or i can use the mouse the mouse is a bit slow I've, actually there's a setting here somewhere hold on where is it there there we go mouse sensitivity let's put that on fast and see oh that's way too oh wait there i can't do that <laughs> hold on let me that, that might be a bit sensible there yeah, that's a bit better right so we can navigate with the mouse still obviously which is all cool like i say the keyboard as well but more importantly the controller so basically this is just a gaming console now it's friggin awesome mate look at this it's boss anyway what you can do well what it does automatically is when games are installed on the phone they will automatically populate themselves into here however you can add stuff into here which are not games and as we can see here what have i got that's i've got win later there um i've also got uh, oh well geforce now that's gaming isn't it um i've got a bunch of things in here which aren't specifically for gaming um I said, I've got a browser. Oh, there's a browser. So, what I'm going to do, in fact, we'll see if the PS5 controller will. T oh, yeah, that'll trigger the browser. Okay, so there, there's the browser there, right? Uh, what, what's this I'm looking at here? I haven't got a clue. I've got no interest in Selena Gomez and whatnot. Anyways, right, if I just click into there, then what we can do is use the keyboard. Hold on, let me go on the keyboard. Hey, the keyboard's broke. Hold on what's going on okay i don't know what was going on there kevin but the, the, i don't know i think there, there might have been a something on the screen that was stopping the keyboard from running but there we go so there's the keyboard working anyway now i'll do it oh yeah and now you get back from here or anything when you're in this particular mode if i come down here yeah I'll, I'll show you that again there's a little arrow in the bottom left there so if i hover over it with the mouse then what will happen is i've got all these options here now if i click on the home thing there take us back to the home screen which is really cool and then let's see what else is in here before i go any further and um, there's a lock button as well on there and then like i said there's that sensitivity thing hold on uh, 
close that, David. You don't want that again. Now, at this point, that's probably everything to do with this thing here. Oh, actually, wait there. There's a button there for the fan, I think, as well. Although you can set things like the fan to like you know kick on automatically like you know when you go into certain things and stuff i think you can do it on a peer game basis as well and you can also do all kinds of weird things like a sign like here like a ram cleaner and stuff like that for when you launch into stuff so if you launch a game or an app or something like that it'll quickly go into like you know freeing up any available ram and stuff like that so there's a whole bunch of stuff inside which will allow you like you know to fully optimize things like storage and memory and crap like that it's really really good anyways hopefully i've got oh do you know what have i got my internet connected <laughs> oh yeah i must have because the browser was just open what a divvy right what i'm gonna do here then kevin let me just jump into oh yeah war zone of all things right and then what we'll see here now is this cool thing at the top here which is basically you know a system monitor so this is going to give us like a bunch of things here, you know battery and whatnot and like you know speed and stuff or what uh, net speed and that bad is it net speed yeah although that looks slow oh actually i say it looks slow it's only com communicating data isn't it for controller information which is why it's not going into like you know high numbers and stuff hold on let me just get out of that there now at this point though look at this my mouse has gone missing <laughs> what's happened right uh, after one of the updates to uh, warzone mobile the mouse went missing on uh, warzone and it, it does this on decks as well with the samsung stuff it's just gone missing however let me just scroll up slowly to where it was there we go now see this overlay here how i use um warzone mobile in 16.9 mode here and um, and i think it's actually the same when you do the straight mirror as well if you want to use a mouse or a, you know because you, you might be using the controller and you can't you can't actually get everything with the controller so as a for instance if i want to go into the start and the game modes i can't use the controller to select that with warzone mobile the controller really only kicks in for gameplay anyway so what i do here I hover my mouse over this overlay because as we can see, we can see the mouse cursor on the overlay. And then what I do, I drag the overlay somewhere. So say for instance, if I want to do some, um, like uh, change some of the settings, I'll drag the overlay up here so I can see the mouse. Then I'll move slightly to the right there. It's gone missing, but I know it's now hovering over the settings button. So I'll tap on the settings button, come back a bit here, back to the overlay. Oh yeah, if you just tap anywhere on the overlay, it'll narrow it down to just that one element. And I usually just have like the frame counter there. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is drag this down here so I can still see the mouse and then just go slightly to the right mouse disappears obviously but it is hovering over the graphics option so i'll tap on graphics come back again to the overlay so i can see my mouse and drag the overlay and then what i'll do i'll just start going next to things here and then clicking on them and altering them and then coming back here and then getting back onto there i mean don't get me wrong mate it's super laborious and stuff but the thing is it's definitely a way that you can use uh, a controller in 16.9 on a tv with the um, warzone mobile this is the only thing that does this everything else that i've got um that i play they're all fine do you know what i mean you, you can you know you can actually navigate to your start buttons and stuff with the mouse and then take over with the controller once it starts now if i just come down to the bottom here let me just tap on that okay now i don't know oh wait there yeah I've not got it in Diablo mode at the moment. Unfortunately, you can't switch to Diablo mode from here. You would have to do that from uh, the previous, you know, the previous kind of like gaming menu. That's got a lot more control in that menu there. But as we can see here, this has got the rise function switched on, which is it is its highest setting uh, before you get to Diablo. And then this will give you monitoring for things like obviously your GPU and your CPU and stuff. And then if I just move away from it with the mouse, that will stay on screen if you want it to. Or if, you, if I just tap on the screen with the mouse, it'll disappear there. Let me just drag my mouse back down so I can see where it is. Um, okay, and then obviously to exit this, then all I would have to do is come back down here click on the home screen there and then if i want to exit from here back to the phone i just twiddle 
the um, the physical gaming button on the phone itself, and then we're back here again. Anyway, Kevin, uh, that's probably the most basic thing that I can do as an overview for this thing for you, mate. Um, but honestly, if you're looking at something for game and right on Android, this is definitely the phone to get. And if I've got to be dead honest, mate, Although that new iPhone 16 Pro Max that I've got is like, you know, it's obviously technically more powerful, you know, with its, A8, 18, with its A18 Pro compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 that's in this phone. But this phone is just way more suited to gaming. And if, you know, I've got to be dead honest, the differences in performance that I've noticed so far within Warzone Mobile... I would still use uh, the snap. Uh, sorry, I'd still use this Red Magic over the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just a much better experience, you know, coming from a gaming point of view. Especially as somebody who is a console player, it is just friggin' awesome, mate. And on top of that, the one thing that I can't wait for is what Red Magic do with their next phone, which should be probably called the Pro 10 to start off, and then they'll probably do like a a, a, a Pro s10 or something or other variants and what have you but you know that phone should get the snapdragon 8 gen 4 in it and i think that that is going to be the big game changer for all this stuff and i'll hazard a guess that it is going to it may not be as powerful maybe as the a18 pro that's just come out with the iphones however that next snapdragon is definitely going to be a lot more useful for the likes of gaming and stuff so i can't wait for that one do you know what i mean and if you know Red Magic do what they did last time and keep a sensible price. Well, actually, when I, say, I was about to say they keep a sensible price. The price on this phone isn't even sensible, mate. It, it is just ridiculously cheap for what you get in it. And also, last year, I believe the, um, the 9 Pro was released late November. Now, that might have only have been the Chinese release initially, maybe not the global release. But if that's anything to go by... Oh, and also, yeah, the 9 Pro was the first phone released with the, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So that's probably a good indicator to, to suggest that we're probably going to see the 10 Pro maybe at the end of this November. And also, you know, that might well be the very first phone to come out with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 in it as well. So that's the one that I'm really looking forward to from a gaming point of view. Anyway, Kevin, I've rabbited on like a complete tool like I usually do. So I'm going to dive off, mate. So I'll catch up with you on some stuff anyway. But hopefully this has been useful to you. Oh, yeah. I've, this is live isn't it for anybody else who's watched this video if you've gotten to the end here and stuff like that hopefully this video has been useful to you and if you are a red magic phone user well more so the red magic 9 pro because i'm not too familiar with the earlier phones if there's anything about this phone specifically to do with gaming and setting up and stuff like that that you'd like to see make some suggestions for us in the comments if anyone's got this far and come across it and um, if i get the time i'll most certainly have a dive into doing and stuff i've also got a red magic uh, 9 pro playlist which is the vast majority is obviously just gaming but as i as and when i do certain things to do with like how to use the phone or setups and things like that i'll add them into that into that playlist as well anyways for anybody who did get this far into the video hopefully it has been useful if so please do give the video a thumbs up and a sub to the channel will be absolutely tremendous I'm Dave at The Game Thing. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.